Today I'm going to be reviewing another SS. Now hold on, hold on. I know some of you have seen my previous review of the Chevy SS. <laughs> this one is a little bit different. Now this is a 2014 Chevy SS, but it has all the Holden Commodore badges on it, which is pretty cool. And this one has an LSA supercharger on it. So this is gonna be more of a review comparison. If you haven't seen my previous review of the Chevy SS, there'll be a link that'll pop up on the screen. That is a more comprehensive review of the car itself. This review is going to be more of a comparison of driving a stock SS versus a modified SS. The car looks completely stock almost under the hood. The LSA supercharger comes off the Camaro, so the engine cover is also from the Camaro. So when you pop the hood, it almost looks like this car came with this engine. Let's start this thing up. Ooh, you can hear that low. Okay, first up, the differences between this car and the previous stock 2015 SS I reviewed, this one is a 14 model and it is an automatic transmission. It has the GM 6L80 six-speed automatic, whereas the first one I reviewed had the Tremec TR6060 manual transmission. Also, this one does not have the magnetic ride suspension and the previous one did. So this car is lowered. He has it lowered on Granatelli Springs and it's sitting on CTSV wheels. So I didn't even notice at first. I thought these were the stock wheels, but these are actually CTSV wheels. And with the Granatelli Springs, it sits flush and it looks really good. The owner said that he had a search to find one in white when he bought this car. And it was really hard, I guess, to find in white. As far as modification goes, it has a light cam, it has long tube headers. The car is making 600 wheel horsepower on 91 octane. He was thinking about doing E85 because we don't have 93 octane where we live. Um, the gas out here is kind of horrible actually. So with E85, he's hoping to go around 750 wheel horsepower. Now I have the traction control completely turned off. I have this thing in sport mode with Stabilitrack off. I have all driver's aids off on this car right now. The owner did ask if I was careful on my downshifts and only use the manual mode because it is stock drivetrain. I'm gonna give it a little bit of beans first just because I know this thing is pretty gnarly. That is incredibly addicting. I have to say, this is the first car I've driven with the 6L80 automatic transmission. And with the paddle shifters, it's nice. It gives it a little blip on the downshift. I like that little kick and a burble. That's nice. Ooh, that little pop. Here it goes. Fish collection. Oh my god! So the owner removed the Chevy emblems and the SS badges on the trunk and it has the Holden emblems that came on this car in Australia where it originates from. And personally I really like that touch because people will see this and they'll go, what, what is that? They have no idea what it is. And I don't know, it just kind of sets it apart. I think the combination of having the white car with the black badges and the CTSV wheels, it looks really clean. Flat out, you have to respect this car because especially in the lower speeds, if you get on it, this thing's no joke. But I can see you getting used to it and wanting more. Now when I drove the previous SS, my butt dyno felt like it was high 12s, low 13. We are at a half mile above sea level here in elevation, so what these cars, the factory claims for these cars, 
they won't be exactly just that because we're half mile above sea level and the density altitude in Tucson especially at our drag strip is even higher than that so it does make cars a lot slower here because of the DA and our regular altitude and because it's so hot here usually I think this is like the sixth or seventh car view I've ever done and I've done back-to-back -back LS powered vehicles now with the exception of the GT350. Honestly, the reason why I've done so many is because I have never really experienced LS power before. I've never really driven a lot of domestic cars. So I'm trying to venture out to different parts. I personally have ever really owned Japanese vehicles. I've had mostly tuner cars my entire life. So for me, it's nice to experience something different. With the LSA Supercharger, it has a nice linear pull and it feels like a stock SS. It drives nicely. There's no real indication that it's modified. The suspension's a little stiff with it being lowered, but it's not bad. This is decent. And all right, right now I'm doing 50 miles per hour and I'm averaging 27 miles per gallon. That's not bad for 600 wheel horsepower. But um, I didn't drive this so I could get good MPGs. I drove this so I can send tires to hell. I wanna do it from a dig real quick. the art aquarium now this was in the competition mode I had trash control off stability mode off all driving assists were off on this car I'm not giving this car the beans this thing's giving me the beans all right ready from a dig <laughs> I think right now, this car is the contender for the fastest car I reviewed on this channel. Here it goes. Oh. oh wow, the brakes work phenomenal on this thing. The supercharger in this thing sounds amazing. I still have to say though, hands down, my favorite supercharged engine sound is a Kenny Bell Terminator. As far as the rest of the car goes, it drives just like the other SS. The suspension is not nearly as dialed in as the magnetic ride, and I could even tell that driving on regular roads. The magnetic ride suspension is pretty amazing, but I mean, this thing looks so good low like this. It looks amazing. So if you're gonna take your car to the track a lot, I feel the magnetic ride would definitely be worth it. If you just are about that low life and having your car look sick, then go without the magnetic ride and lower it. I don't know. And now I know why Cletus McFarlane always says bald eagles, because if you had Goodyear eagles in the back of this thing, they would always be bald. Ah, that wasn't, that wasn't funny. All right, failed joke, sorry. I won't do that again. It's a shame that they don't make this anymore. It's really sad. And I think whoever's in charge of marketing at GM failed because this was a good car. Now I'm gonna put the owner's Instagram down below for you to check out. The car is called Betty White SS, which I think is cute because I love Betty White. My bean score for this car, you know I have a rating of one to five beans, five being like an insane thousand plus horsepower car and one being like a stock tuned sports car. So this car, it's going to be my first four bean score. Four beans, just for the butt pucker factor. That's really hard to say, butt pucker. <laughs> butt pucker factor. Don't say that five times fast on camera on YouTube. Anyway, four beans for this one. This car will kill you if you don't know how to drive. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you next week with some more car reviews and detailing content. And don't worry, the MR2 will be getting some progress as well. See you, bye. This car is going to be my first four bean car just because of the butt pack pack. I can't say it.